Wyman, Cornell and Ketterley shared the Nobel Prize for Physics in 2001. One of the things the Nobel Prize means and the ceremony means is that everybody remembers Eric's the person who forgot to bow to the king. <laughs> there was a breakdown of protocol on my part. There was no excuse because they actually drill us. To, it's more like a, you have a series of rehearsals practicing how to bow to the king, and I somehow managed to bollocks it up at the last possible moment. And I thought maybe, you know, Carl, who came after me, would do this, make the same mistake, and then no one would figure it out. But uh, no, he was perfect. <laughs> I heard about the Nobel Prize when I was woken up by a telephone call, which was at, I think, 5.30 in the morning. So you wake up, you go to the telephone, and somebody tells you, congratulations, you've won the Nobel Prize. You're still tired, your brain is not fully functional, but you realize this is big, and, and what you feel is an, you know, pride, pride for MIT, your collaborators, for yourself, it's wonderful to see that your work gets recognized and acknowledged in this way. To see that an effort which lasted for 20 years, which took so much patience, frustration and tenacity, to see that succeed is just emotional, it's liberating. I will never forget this standing ovation which Dan Kleppner received at the Varenna Summer School when he announced Bose Einstein condensation in hydrogen. It's been a remarkable journey for scientists into unknown territories far beyond the narrow confines of Earth. On the Kelvin temperature scale, which begins at zero degrees for absolute zero, the temperature of the sun is around 5,000 degrees. At 1,000 degrees, metals melt. At 300 degrees, we reach what we think of as room temperature. Air liquefies at 100 degrees. Hydrogen at 20 degrees. Helium at 4 degrees. The deepest outer space is 3 degrees above absolute zero, the coldest place outside the laboratory. But the descent doesn't stop there. With ultra-cold refrigerators, the decimal point shifts three places to a few thousandths of a degree. And laser cooling takes it down three more places to a millionth of a degree, the temperature of a Bose-Einstein condensate. With magnetic cooling, we shift four more decimal places until we reach the coldest recorded temperature in the universe at a lab in Helsinki, 100 pico Kelvin, or a tenth of a billionth of a degree above absolute zero. So will it ever be possible to go all the way, to reach the holy grail of cold, zero degrees? Getting to absolute zero is tough. <laughs> Nobody's actually been there at absolute 0 0.000000 with an infinite number of zeros. That last little tiny bit of heat becomes harder and harder to get out. And in particular, the time scales for getting it out get longer and longer and longer, the smaller and smaller the amounts of energy involved. So eventually, if you're talking about uh, extracting an amount of energy that's sufficiently small, it would indeed take the age of the universe to do it. Also, you actually need an apparatus the size of the universe to do it, but that's another story. Absolute zero may be unreachable, but by exploring further and further towards this ultimate destination of cold, many fundamental secrets of matter have been revealed. If our past was defined by our mastery of heat, perhaps our future lies in the continuing conquest of cold.